Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, today, I need to talk about the cloud. So it's a tough topic for the ICT industry. And uh, uh, what is cloud? There are one story I tell you. Uh, one day, a Chinese student who study in the uh, US uh, go to shopping in a supermarket, uh, open supermarket there. And he bought something, bought a lot of stuff there. He bought, you know, bananas. Once he bought something, he just looked at the sky, and three minutes, three seconds, he can give the exact number of how much he need to pay. So after he look at sky many times, the sellers, all the people also look at sky. So what's on the sky? On the sky, there's nothing but some cloud. Wow, they said, that's cloud computing. <laughs> it's a joke. But uh, what's really the cloud computing? Uh, there are some narrow uh, definition and there are some uh, broad de definition. So I use this uh, uh, standard de definition from uh, the standard group, the US National Institute of Standard and Technology. So what is the cloud? The cloud actually is pri provide the resource on demand. That's, that's simple. The resource, you need a lot of resource, the computing resource, you need storage resource, you need different kind of resource. So, so resource is on, on demand. So you, when you, whenever you need it, whenever, where you are, when you are, you, when you need it, you just get it very quickly. You can get it very, very quickly from you know, the resource on the cloud. So that's the, the cloud. There are major three levels of uh, cloud, that's, uh, you know, uh, IS, ASS, PASS, and SASS. But uh, in a broad, uh, you know, definition, it can be, you know, anything as a service. So let's seek about, check out, you know, the cloud computing. This cloud computing is a predict shift. It moves all the local capability the you know resource capability to move to the center, and then put it on center. They put it anywhere and to save the cost of opex and the capex. That's uh, you know uh, a predict shift. And uh, there are four major benefit for the cloud uh, in four dimensions. The first is cost reduction. Of course, you know if you move you know every. Uh, capability into one story uh, central area, you can reduce the cost. And uh, if you can, you know, re, you know, do the pooling, resource pooling, then of course you can re reduce the cost. Uh, the second is, you know, it's very e easy to upgrade. Whenever you need resource, you just upgrade easily. You need, to, you don't to dimension at the beginning, in, you know, 100%. You, you, you can do in a, in a step level. So it's very easy to upgrade the cloud. And the third is flexibility. Uh, you know, uh, there are dimension, you know, dynamically allocate the load and balance, so it's very flexible. Uh, if there are some, some failure there, and then some other resource can catch up. So the flexibility is the third uh, dimension for the cloud. And of course, uh, this also costs grain because you, you know if you centralize all the uh, capability in one room and you can save a lot of equipment room, so it's very green and uh, uh, good to the uh, environment. Then uh, let's look at the network evolution. The, the whole network of the telecom industry, uh, normally people, uh, you know, separate this network into the access network and the, the bare network, the IP transport network, and the control network and the service. So this is uh, uh, the NGN model uh, after, you know, so many years uh, of ICT industry evolution it's into this uh, level. So uh, we look at this, uh, you know, uh, uh, network, the architecture, the whole network, uh, where 
we really need resource on demand. We check where we need the resource demand. First, uh, the wireless access part. For the wireless access part, actually, because everybody knows, we have a very, very uh, complex algorithm on the wireless. So you need a lot of capability, a lot of computing capability for wireless. So if this one, if you have the, uh, you, the it need a lot of resource, computing resource. I think the major of the computing resource come from this part, the wireless access. But if this one is resource on demand or not, um, let's think about it right now. Uh, yesterday, also many operators also mentioned. You know, right now the traffic is not uh, so you know steady, because somewhere you have very high traffic, somewhere you have very low traffic. Sometime you have very high traffic, somewhere you have lo very low traffic. Like uh, you know a tide, because you know uh, during the daytime people in the working area. So the working area you have high traffic, but uh, during the nighttime you know everybody go back to home. So, so the residential area will have high traffic. So that means you, you need a lot of computer resource there. And it's also you need on demand. So this part, uh, we will talk about you know, uh, the wireless access part, the how we can use cloud for the wireless access. And the second part is uh, wireline access. Um, Wireline access, maybe uh, the computing, you know, the it, wireless access is, uh, you need some computing, but uh, it's not so, you know, uh, difficult or so complex than wireless. So may need some, you know, uh, resource, but not so much. So some people maybe talk about the, uh, they, they want to put a rotor uh, function on, on the cloud, but we will talk about this, this one. It has some, you know, uh, resource, but uh, yeah, on demand, but uh, not so much, you know, as wireless. And for the uh, IP transportation, I think it has nothing to do for the cloud because for the IP, IP transportation, you know, just a router, you need to do, uh, you know, transport from uh, end to end. So there are nothing we can do. And uh, for the uh, control and call, call network part. Um, there one thing you know uh, we can think about is uh, you know the user database. The user user database, uh, thanks to the cloud computing, you can put a, a very large capability of storage on the, on the cloud and uh, to use it in uh, many many network. So so that part we can talk about. Maybe we need the. Uh, the cloud computing technology. Uh, the fourth one, I think, is, is the most important sense is the service network. It's the ICT service, but ICT service is very natural. All the service that we believe will be the cloud computing. So, no matter it's uh, the ICT service or it's ISPs, you know, uh, the o o o over the top services. So this is very natural. We need to put on, sir, on, on the cloud. And uh, also, we need to combine, converge you know, between the IT, uh, ISP, I, IT industry and ICT industry for this uh, service part. And let's talk about the, uh, the wireless cloud. So how we can do this cloud for the wireless area. Uh, recently, you know, this two years, we work very close with the Chinese company, uh, 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 China Mobile. Uh, we create some idea. It's uh, the, the cloud run idea. It's not only cloud. It's uh, the centralized, cooperative cloud and the clean run. How we do this? How, what we are thinking about this is we want to, because we, we think, okay, we need resource on demand on this wireless. So why not we put all the computing resource in one site? And then we can put only very, very little functionality on the radio side. 
so that in the future, it's just a, a bunch of re computer resource there, and uh, on the radio side, you can put all the you know functionality, you know the IF comp uh, component on the antenna. So there are only antenna and uh, to the fiber and to the uh, to the center side, the computing resource part. So if we can do this, we can really change the whole architecture of the uh, wireless industry because it can save a lot of uh, you know, capex, opex, and the power. So let's see you know, um, how we can save this power. It's because right now, many operators if they build a base station there, they need equipment room. If they need equipment room, they need air condition and uh, lighting, everything you need to for this equipment room. So in, like, uh, in, a, in a country like uh, France, at least we need you know, um, 10,000 base station to cover the country. So you need 10,000 equipment room there. All the equipment room, if it's hot summer, you need air condition. If the air condition is there, then it consumes a lot of power, consumes a lot of energy there. So, and also you need, of course, the least you know uh, fee for for the equipment room. If we deploy CRAM, we can combine many many sites into one site. We just uh, put all the computing resources in one site room, that one will well suit and we, we have air condition. But for all other, you know, uh, equipment room, we just re remove it. And then we put all this, you know, RU on the, on the tower or even we put this uh, IF component also combined with antenna, we call it active antenna. So if we do like this, we can reduce 90% of site room. 90% of site room, that's huge of money and a huge of energy and uh, uh, CO2. And uh, it's not just a dream. We have already start to deploy such network in China Mobile, in in, in many cities of China Mobile, we start to do this. And uh, in China, uh, we, we first we, we use 2G network because the 2G network they are very old. They need to to change to our uh, new equipment, and we just use this strategy for them to to design this network. And uh, uh, you can see. We reduce the equipment room there and put the, all the computer resource on the, on the central, uh, um, central office. And uh, also, you know, in one BBU, one board, before, you know, uh, uh, one site you need at least uh, one BBU. Right now, if we combine uh, like 10 sites, we, we, we need on, only three BBU, it's enough. The baseband, you know, uh, we can reduce the, the need of the baseband. Component and uh, also me the most important thing is uh, because of the uh, the energy crisis right now we can we can know it's very uh, serious. Also, France we also have the, some problem on the uh, nuclear uh, plant. So, with this you know architecture change, the China Mobile they claim this is the number from them. So they claimed. Uh, for the test network there, uh, the, they reduced the energy consumption by 68%. That's a very uh, important part for, uh, for China Mobile, because China Mobile, they have the goal. They have the goal to reduce their you know, uh, energy consumption. Yeah. Then, we talk about the second topic, that's uh, the, uh, the CPE part. We talk fixed LAN part. Uh, from wireless, we, to, uh, we shift to wireless. 
so while LAN actually uh, is the computing resource is, is not that you know uh, complex. Uh, we some people said okay uh, they are doing um, virtualization uh, is similar as cloud they put some res some you know uh, functionality from the CPE our home gateway uh, to uh, ORT or uh, BNG yeah it, it can reduce the uh, ca capacity of and the cost for the CPE um, but that not much because the, um, it do not need so much uh, computing power there. So you can m put some functionality there, but uh, it's uh, not so um, uh, efficient as we uh, we think. And uh, uh, let's see, you know, what kind of function we can put from uh, the CPE side to the cloud side. This one we need to very carefully planning where which one we need to put there. Um, some maybe uh, they think you know uh, on the uh, CPE home gateway just uh, left the layer two functionality. They move all the layer three functionality and the forwarding routing functionality on the uh, cloud on the network side. Uh, that's maybe possible. Yes. And, uh, but uh, layer three, you know, the routing function is not that complex. Uh, you can move the function to there, but uh, it will not necessary to reduce uh, a lot of your, uh, the cost of the CPE. And uh, the DHCP, yeah, the, it can be moved there. It's easy function. Still, you also can implement on local CPE. It's not that important also. Uh, the net, uh, the IPv6 uh, v4 function, you can put this function into the cloud. Uh, that's also possible, but uh, still, it's, n it's not really um, can save the cost of the CPE. Some other people said, okay, they want to put uh, the VOIP function from home gateway to the cloud. but. VOIP actually, if you move this function to the cloud, you need to have new standard because you split the function, so you need new interface there. And other people think the CDN, but uh, this this one we s we still need to. I think this area we need to work closer with operator. We need to find out how we can really leverage this one. It's not very clear yet. And uh, for the for the database, yeah, this one I think you know traditional, um, you know HR and HSS is not cost efficient because you need many many uh, HR in different uh, area. Then this one leverages thanks to the cloud computing, you can put you know uh, all this data into one backend. That's that's uh, that's fair, and also uh, you can leverage this data to other applications, to IT and to other applications. But uh, yeah, you need to control uh, you know, security and uh, uh, privacy. And then uh, you can distribute this uh, you know, front end to different area so that uh, to make this network uh, very uh, stable and uh, easy to manage. Uh, in, in China, we have already deployed such you know, um, uh, backend and such archite archite architecture in China. So one backend, we can support 100 million people, subscribers there. So that's a huge number. So you have one or two, it's enough in one country. So in, in old Europe, con Europe countries, maybe you have one, this database uh, for many countries. So this is, uh, is, is real already. And next, I think the most important thing is the service, the service part, we really need to think about how to use the cloud computing technology and merge this IT, uh, the cloud, and uh, our RCT cloud together. So um, the traditional value-added service is uh, like uh, you know the vertical 
functionalities. We have SMS, MMS, WAP Gateway, and others. So if you want to move together, then we do like this. We do an enabler for all these functionalities, and uh, we put all this, you know, uh, this kind of configuration on the on the air on the cloud, and we call it uh, SDP as a services. So we never operate. They need some service. It just uh, uh, as needed to configure this, configure this part to SMS, configure this part to MMS, compi configure this resource uh, to Web Gateway. So you can put it together and uh, share the resource for different functionality, depending on the how much you need for this functionality. And also we link this together with uh, the tr uh, the IT cloud company, the the narrow uh, the uh, the the ISPs cloud, put it together to make you know the better service for operators. And this is uh, an example in, in China Mobile. Because they use this technology, uh, they put, put many, many uh, you know, web gateway and the, uh, SMS uh, gateway, they put it together into one cloud. And then they claim they reduce, cut 50% of CapEx and 60% of OPEX. So that's a very, um, uh, th very good number. So to the summary, um, you know there are a very famous novel in China, Three Kingdoms. The beginning of Three Kingdoms, there are one um, sentence they said, okay, uh, long time divide must unite. Long time unite must divide. So I, I believe this cloud also like this. You know, uh, you, if you think about many functions, you you put it together, and uh, if you find some function you you need to, uh, there are some technical revolution, then you need to put it distributed. I, I think like uh, wireless also. First uh, you 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 put a, a big state base in there, and then you split, and then right now we we put another big base station put together. Maybe after 10 years, we, we still need to put the base station split to, to different area again. So it depends on, uh, on the innovation and uh, the technical evolution. So thank you very much. All right, thanks very much, Liao Dong. Um, we've got time for, for one question. Um, so I'll open it to the floor. Do we have? Question from the floor, uh, gentleman over there. Thank you. My name is Daniel Dirix from E2 Moss. Very quick question, maybe not in interesting for everybody, but in the cloud computing, are you using any server or, for example, advanced TCA? Uh, because power reduction, size reduction is great advantage you can get from ATCA, so. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, most of our server we use ATCA because it's a carrier grid. But uh, some of our uh, functionality maybe you can use, like uh, some uh, value service you can use uh, traditional server. But uh, we prefer to use ATCA to pre pre uh, provide the high quality and the standard. Thank you. Just one more question from the gentleman in the middle. Uh, the question refers to uh, concentrating the baseband functionalities that you presented. Isn't it a little bit going against uh, the general direction where the general direction in optics and radio have been through the time to uh, shrink the analog segment and to extend the digital one? Now apparently you're moving in the opposite direction, remotizing the baseband from the antenna, you actually extend the analog one. Philosophically, no, 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 it's somehow no. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there are different concepts. There are one concept named uh, radio over fiber. That one, you use analog to transmit to the uh, to central one. So we do not use this one. We use, uh, you know, uh, the uh, CPI interface. So that's the baseband. Uh, it's a digital signal come from the, the tower or antenna. We use actual antenna, we put it, it's, uh, already digitalized. 
and use digital signal to the central. 